excited. Okay, the regular council meeting Monday, April the 20th, 2015, at 7 p.m. will now come to order. Can we get a call? Roll call, please, if you're ready, sir. <laughs> yes. He's doing three jobs tonight. Uh, Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambo. Present. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. That's Rick. Uh, Mr. Craywalker. Here. And Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Okay. Let me know here. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Cell phones. If you have a cell phone, if you would put it on vibrate or turn it off so it doesn't interfere with the meeting, certainly appreciate it. I'd like to let everybody know the shelter house that we're sitting in. Sometimes I can speak. The shelter house is available for rent. You just call the city building. I'll be happy to see if it's available when you'd like to rent it. And we have grave sites at the New Cross Cemetery that are for sale. So if anyone is looking for a cemetery lot, we do have those available also. Invocation by Pastor Larry Marvel. Pastor, are you here tonight? Yes, sir. Would you please go up the podium? Sure. Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for our town, and I thank you for those officials that serve, uh, serve us and serve you, Lord. And I pray that you'll give wisdom tonight. Father, you know the decisions that are out there, and uh, we trust, Father, you also know, you know the many com complexities of these decisions, and that, that's why we turn to you, Father, and ask to give a unity and a oneness and, and certainly a focus of direction. And Father, we do thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and thank you for his love for us. In my son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You'll join me now with the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll use the flag in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. I have a request. Could we turn the fans on, please? It's starting to get warm in here already. All the bodies. Thank you. Appreciate it. Action on the minutes. Regular meeting, April the 2nd, 2015, please. So moved. Second. <coughs> Who is second? Zambach. I think uh, yeah, Mr. Zambach. Zambach. Mr. Zambach. Was. Okay, I got that one. Yeah. Any questions or anything? Yeah, anybody, any questions on the minutes? Anyone go? You would call for the vote. Uh, Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybalker? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. And Mr. Zambach? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Communications. We now have a proclamation for Motorcycle Awareness Month. I'd be happy to read that, please. Uh, would you mind coming up, sir, if you're going to accept it? Come on, or come back here if you wish, whichever way you like. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Okay, this is from the Office of the Mayor for the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. It's a proclamation. Whereas safety is the highest priority for the highways and streets of our villages, cities, and states, and whereas motorcycle riding is a popular form of transportation and recreation for over 200,000 people, across the state and millions across the nation. And whereas in an effort to make motorcycling in Ohio a safer and more enjoyable sport, motorcycling organizations from around the state are now planning a collective venture to promote motor motorcycle awareness. And whereas all motorcycle organizations, clubs, dealerships, groups and highway safety officials in our state should join Abate of Ohio Incorporated in the Motorcycle Ohio program and actively promoting safe operation, increased rider training, improved licensing efforts, and motorist awareness. And whereas during the month of May, all roadway users should unite in the safe sharing of the roadways throughout the state of Ohio. And therefore, I, Lowell McLaughlin, Mayor of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, does recognize the month of May 2015 as Motorcycle Awareness Month and urge all members of our community to join in recognition of this significant occasion and the achievements above mentioned. 
Tongue gets caught sometimes around my teeth, and it's hard to get these words. Out. I don't say and then or whatever. Okay, we have a city manager's report now, please. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. Uh, I'd like to jump down to item B, finance discussion. Uh, Ms. Harris, please. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mayor, Council, and the members of the public here tonight. I want to present our March um, finance report. Total revenue that we took in for the month of March was $685,425.85. Um, $357,742 was from our real estate tax collection. We received that twice a year. So that's the big jump in the uh, revenue for March. Total March expenditures was $356,786.53. March's total <coughs> income tax receded was $69,657.05. That was a 5% increase from this time of last year. Year to date income taxes we've received is $253,135.71. And again, we're up a little bit from this time last year, 2.8%. So I put some uh, graphs on the front page for council this month to see if this is something that we would, uh, that you would like. I'd like to track the general fund with revenue and expenditures only on that front page. Try to make it a very easy way to um, kind of check our progress. So our general fund receipts today for the first three months is $414,678, and we are about 31% collected for our revenue for this time of the year, and the expenditures are $293,654, and we are um, have expended about 21%. So we will watch that very closely every month. Good. Council, do you like the graphs yes. in this page yes. now? Is that something you'd like to see continue? Yes. That's, that's a yes, yes, yes. Right. So right. thank you so much for putting that on. Do you have any questions? Anyone on for Mrs. Harris? Anyone? Yes, go ahead. Um, go to the check register. OK. OK. Um, the one that you know, I see a legal aid for $45. That's in, that's in uh, account 7042. And also, legal aid. Legal ads. ads. I'm sorry. I, said, I did say aid tonight. Mm -hmm. 70047. I'm going to have to ask you this. Why, you know, why is it two and why is one a lot more expensive than the other? There's a combination on the New Carlisle News check that we wrote for various legal ads. I can certainly get the detail of the amount and the ads that they were. They're mostly council meetings, but I can copy that uh, the detail out for you. Well, one says Cox, which I assume that's the Springfield Sun, and the other one, which is a, you know something a lot more, which is the New Carlisle News. And then that's why I'm asking why is the New Carlisle News so much more. It, I, would, I would think it would be less, John. It may be a multiple billing. That they're paying at this time, and she'll be happy to look it up for you and let you know. I'll get you the details of what it all, what the totals came up to. They're multiple ads. That works for listings for council. Uh, then also in, in account seven zero zero four zero, there's four hundred. We pay out four hundred five dollars. I hope that's for a series of meetings. And I'll get the details, the breakdown for that one also. And that's an awful lot for one meeting. Yeah, it, norm, it's I think, for one I meeting. think normally there is probably say five legal ads. Um, and then one legal ad for Springfield News, and so one and five for maybe New Carlisle News, and that's the difference in the cost. Okay. Right. Would you still like the, the detail, for instance, on this one case to see? To tell you the truth, I, I think I would like to see a breakdown just for the, that particular month. You know, okay. Because that's, that's what caught my eye. Certainly. Okay, you all set? Anyone else? Any other questions for the finance director? Mrs. Harris, thank you so much. We appreciate all, your, all you do, and you're keeping right on top of it. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Harris. I uh, will move uh, down to myself for uh, the service discussion. See, um, we are actively dura patching when we're not raining. 
Um, and we're out still trying to work a little bit of tree work. And then with the rain comes a lot of grass cutting. As you're well aware, we, do, we did not hire two seasonals this year, so we're going to try and do our best to keep up with the uh, grass. Uh, we do have numerous acres of uh, lawn to cut, including the cemetery and all our parks. Uh, but that is all I have. I can entertain any questions. Um, I didn't really put a whole bunch underneath mine. Yeah, go ahead. I, I already asked you, Mr. Kitko, but I just want to share it with the crowd. The, the patch job that's on Main Street right across from Secure National Bank, it's still real rough. That is just a Dura patch job, correct? And it correct, will be temporary. Temporary will be fixed with permanent asphalt. Correct? Yes. And, and there is a purchase order already in for asphalt uh, right now. So as soon as we get a few minutes, we'll be out doing those permanent repairs. Thank you. Has the cost gone up for asphalt compared to last year? Um, I think like a buck. I think we were like $64 a ton last year. We put in for 65 this okay. year. Thank you. Anyone else for Mr. Kinko? Anything? Okay, would you like to go ahead, sir? All right, we'll continue on to uh, Section D, Planning and Zoning Discussion. Uh, Mr. Bridge, please. Thank you, Mr. Kinko, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Council, Member of the Public. I'd like to share with you the March activity for the uh, Planning Department. As you can see, uh, since the weather is getting a little warmer under code enforcement activity, we do see such a, a, a slight spike from February to Mar March as far as a number of uh, yellow tags or verbals or violations is issued. Um, jumping on down to ordinance of the month, it's 1460.26a, vegetation of cutting is required. So basically what that says is all grass, weeds, or rank vegetation has to be cut on your property six inches or less. We are pretty aggressive about getting those corrected. So uh, given the time of the year, I thought it was appropriate to uh, uh, publicly say that we will again this year be doing um, grass abatements. Uh, if your property is not at six inches or less, we will issue a violation. You'll have five days to correct it at that point in time. If it is not corrected, we will abate the property. New Carlisle is open for business. Uh, members of council, I had placed a sheet on uh, each, in front of each of you. These are a series of vacant parcels. Unfortunately, it does not have an address since they are vacant. Uh, these are the four parcels off of uh, North Dayton Lakeview Road, just slightly north of Van Crest Health Care Centers. Basically, it's, it's a series of four parcels. Each one of those parcels average about 1.9 acres. They, uh, two of them have 165 feet of street frontages, while the other two has 190 feet of street frontages. All four parcels are zoned light industrial. Uh, what is permitted in, in, in industrial zones are industrial and manufacturing uses, research development establishments, warehouse and wholesale establishments, building material, sales and storage yards. Uh, conditional uses would include junkyards, salvage yards, automobile wrecking yards, resource and mineral, mineral extraction, and also retail establishments. Moving on down into miscellaneous, uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, on 4-16-15, which was this past Thursday, we had a BZA hearing for the Speedway redevelopment project going on in town. For those of you who are unaware, the Speedway on the west side will be torn down and then redeveloped. Um, the BZA approved a series of six variances for Speedway. Three of those variances centered around their ground sign, changeable copy, total sign area, and also sign height. Two of the variants uh, surrounded around their wall signs. Uh, both of those dealt with the size of the wall sign and also the direction of the wall sign. We also had a variance on the driveway widths. At the same, uh, uh, the same evening as well, planning board um, approved a few things for the speedway redevelopment. One is the uh, alley vacation. Uh, council will be introduced to that ordinance tonight. It will be voted on at the next council meeting. They also approved the overall site plan with the following conditions. A white vinyl fencing at the southern border, um, opposed to a board on board privacy fence. That a white vinyl uh, fencing will have a 10 foot setback on each side of the property, and there will be reflected in the road markers at the end of the alley vacation. Uh, vacant housing for the month, we had 77 total. 68 of those are residential, and nine of those are commercial. I do believe that is all I have. I will be happy to entertain any questions or comments. Council, anyone? Yes, Mr. Bridge, the uh, outlaw at IGA that you call Chrysler is taking over. Are they going to leave that crushed limestone or do they plan on black topping that? What that is, it's actually not crushed limestone. The uh, planning board approved a particular particular type of gravel that would, could be used as a base for when they do asphalt back. Uh, so the time being, it is will stay when they go to asphalt back, they'll simply just asphalt over the current. So they, they do plan to eventually? Long term, yes. Okay. Sure. Thank, 
Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Can you expound a little bit on the speedway? Um, it's just not going to be a speedway, is it? No, it's more it's a speedy cafe. We actually have a representative in the audience tonight. Uh, so thanks for coming up. Um, any point in time you want to add anything, sir, just, just, just come in. Pretty much it right on that. All right. It's a new store. It's about uh, 3,900 square feet in size. We'll have a cafe and new pumps and new tanks and new driveways. And how many are you going to employ? That's still to be determined, but my guess would probably be between 15 and 20. And to those of you who don't know what a Speedy Cafe is, it'll be a, a different eating option here in town. You can actually go in, order something, they make it for you, they give it to you, you eat it. Um, it's a great concept. They seem to be going over very well in other uh, places that do have them. If you're unfamiliar with them, I invite you to get on Google and just Google search Speedy Cafe, look at their menu options. I think it's going to be a great addition to our town. Definitely take advantage of it. And there's also some other additions. Is there a reason for the driveways to be bigger? Are you expecting RVs? come in yeah yeah i mean that's one of the reasons for how they're uh, that's something i'm going to get in next uh, week because that's when you have the site plan in front of you right. uh, but just so you know one of the driveway was this 53 feet our code says you can go mm -hmm. max 30. that particular driveway will be exiting onto north main street so there, there's multiple reasonings with the width of that particular um, driveway uh, the first being where their fuel pumps are located and when the fuel truck comes in to empty to fill up those fuel tanks with gas we're going to need some um, additional footage so cars can still go in and out on that particular side where the fuel truck will be. Uh, the second reasoning as to why is, Mr. Craybrook, you are 100% correct, we have a lot of um, trucks that carry boats or pool boats or uh, contractors that cut grass that have large trucks and then also large trailers for their equipment. The width of that will allow them to turn onto Main, to North Main without crossing over that double yellow line. Mm -hmm. Right. Any decisions yet on the other speedway? Is it going to stay open, close? It's been a big uh, rumor floating there's, around. There's nothing that's been determined. Okay. Thank you. One other question, if you would. Time, you have any type of time frame you could let people know at this point? Um, the best time frame that I can tell you is once we get all the approvals, you know, our permits from the state agencies and all the other agencies, it takes about 90 days to rebuild. So they'll tear it down and rebuild it in about 80 to 90 days. Uh, as far as when that will, when that will start, that will still be determined until we get all the evidence and all the necessary uh, stuff that we need to build. Thank you. Appreciate that. I know this is going to be a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, you're going to dig up the old tanks, aren't you? And yes. put new ones in. Put all new ones in. Yes. Especially that one that leaks. <laughs> I don't know anything about that, but yes, that's, that's our intent is to replace the tanks with a new store. All right, thank you. Okay, we all set, Council? Yes. yes. If anyone like to see what the Speedway building will actually look like, I actually have some elevation, color elevations of the final product. So um, they're actually, I put those up at the city building along with a packet of the actual overall site plan going, you know, so that is available for the public to see if you are interested in more about Speedway. Thank you, sir. We all finished, Council? Thank you, Mr. Like Bridge. To move uh, we'll move on down to item E, fire discussion. Uh, Chief Phillips, please. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, citizens, and guests. For the month of March 2015, the division responded to 109 calls for service. Fire responses till 16 with an average response time of 5 minutes 36 seconds. The division responded to 93 emergency medical calls for service with an average response time of 4 minutes 42 seconds. Uh, you'll notice that this, this month's uh, report is a little bit uh, more robust. I decided to add in some uh, information I thought would benefit everyone. Um, some training offered for the, the month of March. We had uh, 8 hours of fire training offered. We had 8 hours of EMS training offered. Uh, fire training offered for 2000, that should be 2015, sorry. So far this year was 30 hours. Uh, EMS training offered so far this year is 32 hours. Um, some outreach things that we did in March, uh, we had a CPR recertification class for the Elizabeth Township Community Center. Also listed there, uh, May 19th at 6 p.m. we'll be having an open house at our fire station to celebrate EMS week. That's uh, a national uh, recognition week for EMS responders. Uh, we're going to have a community CPR class will be starting at, at 6 p.m. and that will be free to anyone who wants to attend. 
and then we'll have uh, some health screenings, blood pressure checks, glucose checks, and uh, some refreshments. I do have a stack of flyers here if anybody's interested in one of those. Um, some projects that we had going on, uh, some updates on those. The gear project, the last batch of the firefighter turnout gear uh, has been ordered, should uh, be arriving in soon. We did get our boots and helmets. Those usually come way before the turnout gear because the turnout gear is actually made. So uh, we should be seeing the turnout gear coming in pretty soon. Um, equipment wise, engine 52 got a new set of rear springs. Uh, Medic 52 had a defective siren that got replaced. And then some building and grounds projects uh, most of you have probably seen already that our, our front apron has been ripped out and is being re re replaced. The sounds, if weather permitting, it sounds like the last pour will be sad this coming Saturday, so hopefully we'll wrap that project up pretty soon. Um, our conference room did receive some new uh, paint, some updating, and our turnout gear racks arrived and were assembled and are in place. Uh, some Elizabeth Township statistics. Elizabeth Township Fire and EMS responded to a combined total of 14 calls for service during the month of March 20, 2015. Fire responses totaled one. Emergency medical responses totaled 13. There were 10 responses into Elizabeth Township, one response into the village of Christiansburg, one response into the city of Troy, one response into the city of Tip City, and one response into New Carlisle. Some uh, significant events for March on 3-5, we did have a car fire on Spinning Road. Uh, that fire was handled by our crews and got extinguished pretty quick with no injuries. Uh, on 3-5 again, uh, out on route, State Route 40, we had a barn fire mutually with Bethel, Miami. Uh, that fire was brought under control again with the quick work of our mutual aid partners and us uh, with no injuries. At 1101 Kennison Avenue, we did have a CO emergency. There was no uh, injuries there. Uh, it turned out to be uh, they had a contractor that installed a hot water heater incorrectly and it did not vent it. So it was uh, venting CO into the building. So we uh, advised them to get that corrected quickly and uh, I got a call uh, shortly later that day that that problem was correct. And then we did respond down into Bethel Clark on another structure fire. Uh, again, that fire was brought under control by the mutual aid partners and us with no injuries. Uh, that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll entertain. Council, any questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Reynolds. Out of curiosity, how often do we go into Troy? Uh, Elizabeth Township has been added to Troy's alarm cards. So we're going in there more often, but every one, like once every other month or so. Okay, I just wonder because I happened to see one of our medics up there just right. on Sunday yesterday. So. Yeah, usually when we get into the city of Troy, it's, Troy's having a pretty bad day if they're calling us. <laughs> okay, just was wondering. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, John. Okay, um, I just let anybody know I did contact you and tell you mm -hmm. about, about these questions. So. Sure. Okay. What? What do you mean by an operational model? What, what, what's an operational model? Well, our operational model, it's a, it's a setup for us to standardize our complete operation on the fire side. Emergency medical side, we have protocols that we have to follow through this area, so we all follow those protocols. An operational model for the fire side is basically putting in our own quote unquote protocols for how we handle certain types of incidents. So I can say, if we have a structure fire, we're going to do this, 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 and this for the first five minutes of the fire. It's a standardized way of operating, so I know that things aren't missed. Will it fit every fire? Probably not. Will it fit every incident? Probably not. But it gives our employees a basis that they know going in, uh, this needs to get done, this needs to get done, this needs to get this, and this needs to get done. And that's something that we try to train on so everybody understands a standardized operating procedure. So it doesn't make any difference who the chief is or the captain is or anything. And right. And that way that model can fit no matter who's running the seat. All right. What do you mean by part-time firemen and paid by call? Well, we have most of our employees are part-time. We run a part-time program. Every employee is part-time, including myself. We do six-hour blocks. You work six hours. You can work 12 hours. You can work 18 or 24. So each employee that works on the part-time program is who is staffing the firehouse on a 24-7 basis here and in Elizabeth Township. Okay. The paid for call folks are the people that are at home. If there's an incident that we have, a fire per se, this is the best example, if we have a fire, they respond into the station from home, get on some apparatus and go out to the scene, okay, along so with our part-time staff. Okay, so if someone was at the station for 24 hours, 
Can they also get paid per call too? They can run paid per call once they're off the part-time shift. If, if they live in the city of New Pearl Isle, they work their 24, they go home and two hours later we get a fire response, they, they can come back up and take a run. Okay. Um, what's on this email that I got from you? Mm -hmm. uh, it says unorthodox. Right. That kind of, that's, to me, I, that's a big broad range. <laughs> can you explain that just a little bit, how somebody can look at your operation and say, you know, that's unorthodox? Well, for our department, historically, at least in my opinion, and I've been here a little while, I haven't been here as long as some, but they saw that standardization as kind of an unorthodox way of doing things. Prior to me becoming chief, we kind of just, the incidents were being handled, but it was kind of a haphazard type of way of handling things, and we weren't really accountable. Some people weren't really accountable for how things were getting completed, how tasks were getting completed. And I got a lot of kickback originally when we started to work this standardization plan through that, yeah, that's, that's a little unorthodox for us. That's not something that we're familiar with, things like that. Does that make any sense? Yeah, well, so it was something new and they, they just didn't want to change. Yeah, and it, that's historically in the fire service, we're, we're so scared of new things, everybody doesn't like it. So we try really hard to stay on top of the new tactics and new strategies and things like that. But sometimes it's really a hard thing to sell to people that have been in the business for a long time. Yeah. Um, you talked about training hours. You right. Know, and, uh, and I mentioned that to you the, the mm -hmm. earlier today. You know, is there a lot of training and research information going on now? Oh, yeah. That, that yeah. hasn't done in the, in the past? Or? Well, we've had training in the past. Um, we've tried to ramp up the training over the last five years or so. When Chief Young was here, that was one big thing he was really interested in, is, is really making our training pr program more broad. So last year we did really well. This year it's even more robust. We went to two EMS trainings per month instead of one. We went to two, fire, two or three fire trainings per month instead of one. So yeah, we're trying to stretch out as many subjects as we can and train on as much as we can. Is that mandatory? It, there's some minimum requirements to keep your certification up or get your card renewed, so we try to hit at least the minimum or more so everybody has an opportunity that you don't have to search for training outside of the division. You can get everything you need inside. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else for the fire chief? Thank you, chief. Appreciate yeah. it. We'll have to wait until the, we get to the uh, public speaking portion, if you would, please, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, if you would continue, please. Thank you, Chief Phillips. Uh, we'll move down to uh, F Police discussion. Uh, Sergeant, Ar uh, sorry, Sergeant Underwood, please. Thank you, Mr. Kiko, <clears throat> Mayor, Council, and citizens. For March of this year, reports by New Corral deputies, uh, they took 17. Reports by county deputy, there was 46. And that's a total reports as 63. And under... Uh, Miles patrolled, we had 1,345 miscellaneous calls over 38 and five follow-up investigations. Under traffic information, we had 57 traffic stops and 73 citations issued. We had no OVI arrest last uh, month, but last week we had five. So, uh, they, looks like there's more coming as weather gets better. Uh, we had three parking citations. Uh, and non-injury accidents, we had six. And injury accidents, the new law guys took none. Under arrest information, there were 12 criminal adult arrests. Uh, those were five charges on those. Now, including in that is down here where it says warrant arrest. There are 28 warrants was issued on those 12 people that had five charges, if you can follow that. That's a lot of warrants on, that's four or five warrants on each person just about. And there was no juveniles arrested. Special interest, uh, we had no assault. We had one breaking and entering. Uh, we had seven thefts, no vandalism, six 911 hangups, uh, phone harassment, we had zero. Domestic violence with assault, zero. Domestic violence with verbal, we had two. Lockouts, none. Peace officer, none. Alarms, three. And we had 16 assists. And just a side note, uh, if you feel like you have an emergency, then you need to call 911. A lot of people get confused when to call us. If to you it's an emergency, you need to call 911. 
And if it's time to line up, one of the dispatchers will, will switch you over to another line or have you call back. Uh, the non-emergency number, though, uh, is, of course, 937-328-2560. And just a note that uh, the mayor asked me about when I came in tonight, uh, we do have currently, to date, the highway patrol has taken three crashes inside the city limits of Neutral Isle. I do not know. I do not have that, but I can next meeting. <laughs> okay. I'll have the locations for you next meeting. And that does conclude my report. And if there's any questions. Yes, Mr. McIntyre. Sir, I have a question for you. Um, I know last year we had an issue with the hot rod kids doing their street racing in town. Uh, it seems by looking at social media this week, the issue that we're having is similar, but now it's kids on motorcycles racing through town. Um, it's a two-part question. One, is your department aware of it? I, I know you do all you can do or let the highway patrol know. Just an update on that. And also, um, are people calling you and letting you know? Because I think too often people will see it and, and maybe not report it like they should. So just if you could provide an update on those two things. Well, I can tell you this, when I came in this morning, uh, our sheriff had a message, uh, sent me an email letting us know there was complaints up here over the weekend uh, with motorcycles and their noise. The complaints were speeding uh, and noise uh, late at night they were making a lot of noise. Uh, so we are aware of that and when we have someone up here, we'll do the best we can to look into it. Um, with that, um, that's what we know right now. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, how much money did we bring in on car crash tickets? Because typically you're cited for a car crash. Well, that would have to be looked up because anytime there's a car crash, it could be anything from a sure clear distance to a stop sign violation to a traffic light. And they all have different fines attached to them. That information is available through um, municipal court. They actually keep a record of how much is give to New Carlisle on a monthly basis uh, so we can find out how much money we receive from citations per month. And now do we lose those citations now that the state troopers are taking these incident reports? They're, I would imagine they are writing them under their state code and they are getting the money for it would be my guess. So we're going to be taking a hit allowing the state troopers to take these accident reports? Uh, to answer that, uh, I will check, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're writing it under their, their code, their code, and they'll get the money for it. So, yes, um, but that's not a considerable amount of money when you start looking at those types of crashes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I would like to add this. The money they receive from the crashes probably doesn't pay for the time the troopers there doing the investigation. All right. Okay. And it also helps speed up trying to get it resolved and taken care of if we don't have a deputy available. Is that correct? Yes, that sir. That was that a is correct. Of doing that? Yes. And if we, have a, if we have a deputy available, then the deputy's available. So if, uh, we, if, especially if an injury accident, we get somebody up here as soon as we can. It doesn't matter who it is. If we have an injury accident, uh, we're going to get somebody up here. The fire department's going to be here. We're leaning on them right now somewhat. Uh, they know that there may not be anybody in the area, so they're getting here fast. They have a great response time. So if you're injured, we're, we're coming. Anyone else? One more follow-up. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, this doesn't change the contract at all now that a new agency is coming in and collecting this fee. It's not going to change our contract at all, will it? I, I don't know why it would. I don't know if Sergeant would have the answer to that. At that point, I, I wouldn't think so, but those are questions I'll have to confirm and I'll, I will get back with you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate your time and all you do for us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. Uh, we'll move down to G informational items. Uh, the first item I have is uh, we need to have a motion to fill the Board of Zoning Appeals BZA vacancy, and I have attached a uh, um, the ap applicant's letter in your packet. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Mayor. I move to appoint Mrs. Terry Hoffman to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Second. Mr. McIntyre, second. Any uh, 
conversation? Anyone? Do you call for a vote, please? Mr. Zamboff? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. <clears throat> Seven to zero. Seven out. I want to just uh, reiterate, it's so hard to get people to step forward in this community to fill these vacancies that we have. Mrs. Hoffman, thank you so much for stepping forward. We appreciate it. You're Very much. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Just real quick while we're on the boards, I have been, not in the last week, but I am working with someone who is interested in trying to get a list of board vacancies um, currently, and I think she's right here in the audience. So we do have another candidate looking to get on another board. Good. Right. That's good can. to hear. I don't know. I only see her on Wednesday morning, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, under informational items, now item two, uh, there were some questions from the last council meeting about tornado sirens and hyperreach. Uh, I did make a contact to Springfield City Dispatch and contacted the 911 dispatcher and the National Weather Service. The hyperreach communication communications is operated solely by the National Weather Service in Wilmington, and they're based on their meteorologists, their data. Um, wherever you see that polygon that uh, shows a tornado warning, anything in that polygon, the hyperreach system will call those people in that area and as that polygon moves it will drop hyperreach people off and pick hyperreach people up so it's a constant uh, fluid uh, call and you call new people and drop old people off as that moves as far as the, and then what happened in this last scenario is there was a double as that Springfield City actually also um, activated the hyperreach they have that capability even though they weren't supposed to and this they just use it for our, for our monthly testing so we had a double activation during the tornado warning from the National Weather Service and Springfield City Dispatch, so we got that corrected. Uh, item number three for your information I'm, is the to uh, tornado siren protocol. Uh, currently, ours is not an automatic, uh, it's not automatically signaled from the National Weather Service. This is signaled by Springfield City Dispatch manually, and they use the hyperreach communication that comes from the National Weather Service, so as soon as the hyperreach in our area with that polygon goes um, for a tornado warning then they will hit the button for our tornado siren um, we're still looking at those alternatives uh, which started i think back with chief young on alternate ways to uh, have that siren set off I, I was told that they definitely don't sign it off if joe sees it out in the middle of a field sees a funnel cloud they call it in to 911 and then they have to send a trained or an expert up to verify Sounds like it could be too late, but that's how they go to set that siren off. So they won't do it to everybody who says they see a funnel cloud. Hmm. Any questions on the hyperreach or the tornado side? Council, it seems with Springfield on our east side and everything seems to come from the west. And yeah. It should be somebody on the west side of Nicolau yeah. instead of on the east side. Yeah, well, it, yeah just because they um, are Twelve over there. Yeah. The distance, you know? yeah, it's, they're, they're looking at the tornado warnings all throughout the whole thing. How about if we ask Tip City to give us a little heads up? <laughs> <laughs> and that mayor is all I have for the management. Thank you so much. Today. We appreciate it. Any, any other questions for anyone on staff? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. How, have you had any updates or talked to anyone about Bell Manor? I do not have any updates at this time. I do have an update from our, the engineer that is working with them. Okay. Um, and they're continually looking at uh, different site plans. Um, there's some concerns, I think, with some utilities, but they still have not uh, come out with a full set of like construction or site plan drawings. So they're still in that stage. Okay. Thank you. Everybody else set? Now we're at communications for, uh, well, comments is what I meant to say from the members of the public. Anyone from the public like to speak? Yes, sir, if you go up the podium. We have a gentleman here that'd like to go up first. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay, appreciate it. Would you like to go first? Instead of waiting for last, you'd like to go first. Okay. Well, I have several things, so I'll just ask one, then I'll sit down and let Mr. Cobb have All right, it. sir, that sounds then like I'll a come great back. idea. Because, you know, I can't stay within the five-minute time limit you guys insist on putting me on. And I've done shot a minute of it. My name's William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. 
Our first question is goes to Chief Phillips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get me, God, not you again. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was going to ask you about the uh, says so here training was offered eight hours, and I think uh, Mr. Kraybacher asked you if that was uh, mandatory or not. No, it's not mandatory. It is not. Why offer training if nobody shows up? Continue to offer training. Everyone needs to recertify it, so it's it's on them if they show up or not. So you can't make that man a mandatory training? I could put it in the policy, but oh. my, my, the complexity of that is I have a lot of part-time employees that are full-time firefighters at other places. Mm -hmm. So they get a full cadre of training at their full-time job. So it and seems- that And that certification would transfer to us, I mean, to, sure. to this right. department, oh, yeah. because yeah. it's fire certification right. Right. from the state of Ohio, correct? Right. Okay. Right. That answered my question. I mean, if you have people in other departments, they're getting that training. And I forgot I had the wrong glasses on. I got the ones I can see through. Uh, so that, that certification is good any place in the state, whether right. it's fire, EMS, Correct. paramedic, or whatever we have, right? Right. Okay. Uh, next question is on the community CPR. Do they have to be residents of the city or anybody within the county? Anybody within the county. Anybody that shows up will give okay. them CPR. Any age limits? Uh, Captain Bowman, she's in the audience. Is there any age limit for the... Okay. Basic class okay. Um, it depends on the class that they're taking. If it's a basic um, layperson CPR class, okay. um, the age limit is 12. So anybody For under the age start. 12, okay. can, anybody under the age of 12 can take the class, but they will not be certified to right. the American Heart Association. Right. Does that include adult CPR, uh, child, infant, and first aid, or just CPR? There is various classes. AED. Okay. I'll see what I can do by getting some people there. I, I, will, tell well, we'd them, I will tell them they will take this class. <laughs> see, unlike, so you make it mandatory. Uh, un, unlike Chief Phillips, I will make it mandatory. <laughs> uh, you said Medic 52 had a defective siren, it was replaced. What type was it replaced with? Was it a Federal 200 or something less? No, it was the same, exact same model that it had. Okay. It, it was actually oh, a speaker. What well, was it? It was a Federal. Federal, federal okay. 300, I think, is what the model was. Okay. Do you run 200 watt sirens in your medics? Lieutenant Adams? The only reason I'm asking, I've heard <laughs> some of these medics that I, they've gone by me and I couldn't even hear it. So right. I'm wanting to know. It should be a, at least a 200 watt siren. It's got two sirens. Okay, what's driving it? What I'm getting at. You can have a 3,000 watt siren if you got a 5 watt output. It yeah, don't matter. Okay. Okay. So if you're just using the standard siren, it's running off one Okay. What's the output on that? <laughs> Or the box of 200 watt output? Okay, so that's why you have 150 watt siren. It's 150 watt siren, 200 watt output, and both siren. Mr. Lindsay, we seem yeah. to be getting into very yeah. technical stuff. Right, well, that maybe that I'll ask him here in a little while. So okay. I'll let Mr. Cobb have the floor, then I'll come back to other sergeants. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Mr. Cobb, if you'd like to go up now, please. Cobb 2 of 2 Villa Drive. What I'd like to address the council here, I understand the mayor in the paper you put that if the levy passes May 5th that some of the money in 2016 is going to have to go toward the new cruiser and equipment, correct? If there's money that's available at that time, we need desperately, we need a new cruiser, yes. Thanks for that. That may, may not happen. First, we have to get a pass. What happens after it gets passed? Again, all the money will definitely be used strictly for police for the city of Nukala. Okay. Nothing else. <clears throat> Earmarked only there. I, I, can I ask or request that we look into bringing back our own police department? And the reason I say that, Northampton 
has three full times, one part time. Lawrenceville, two full times, one part time. South Charleston has four and two. Donaldsville has one and two. These are townships and villages have very low, little income. We're a city. And we can't afford our own police department. And we have Nothing very little sure. income. I, I will let the sergeant answer on what we get from the sheriff's department, if he would, please. Above and beyond There's about two the deputy list of what we actually receive in services through the sheriff's office. Just like currently, uh, the sheriff's office has in-car cameras on, in some of their vehicles. Uh, the county is providing a computer for up here. Uh, for that information to be downloaded and it will be wireless and it will be available for us to pass on to you folks uh, as soon as we compile a report. So investigations are up here. It, the list goes on and on. A guy comes up here for evidence every morning about 5 o'clock. Uh, you are getting your money for the buck up here. There's no doubt about that. I would be more than happy to bring that list to the next meeting, or I can send you a copy of it if you wish. Well, was, all I'm saying there is what we're paying the sheriff's department or the county mm -hmm. can be put towards having our own police department. I have nothing against the sheriff's department. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Anybody pins that badge on, I, I respect. Thank you. But what I'm getting at is why all these other villages have their own law enforcement and their townships and villages and we're a city we cannot have our own police department. We used to have our own police department as you know. Uh, let me ask you a question. Do you think all those villages have mayor's courts also that's not being taken over to Springfield? A lot of them are going to Springfield now. I think they are. They, they don't have the mayor's court. No. I know the one in uh, Northampton is definitely a mayor's court yet. Is that true? Yeah, Northampton is, but the rest of them are taken into the Springfield Court. Again, we have looked in, in the past as a council to see about opening or having our own deputies. The quality of people that you would get, the cost factor. What happens is you get people in that are wanting to be a police officer. As soon as they have the training through us, then they go to the Sheriff's Department. So you're constantly running new people in is what happens. And the cost factor is probably the same, if not more, than having actual deputies, which we get the whole backing of the Sheriff's Department then. Well, that's true, but that's a risk you run. But still, what I'm saying, you take Eden, Eden's way smaller than us. They have five, four or five, full-time, three part-time. And they're paying just as much as we are, if not a little bit more. I've talked to the chief over there about that. If you'll check into it, they're paying their police department what we are paying our sheriff's department. But Mad River Township has sheriff's department also. Right. They have a sheriff plus they have their own police department. Enid has their own. Mad River Township has the sheriff. So All I'm saying is I'd like to see it looked into to bring our own law enforcement back. Okay. Thank you for your opinion. We appreciate it, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Mr. Cobb, I think, please don't hold me to the time. It goes by quick. I think three years ago, and I think there's some people in this audience that sat on that panel. They were not council people. They were citizens. I mean, we're citizens, but what I'm saying, it wasn't council that looked into it. It was a panel that looked into it, and they came back and said we could not get with a private police pool what we get with the deputies for the same amount of money. And the major factor was, major thing was, if you look at most of these places, that these smaller places that have their own police force, they're retired, they're young, or they're people that other departments didn't want. But have you looked at if this levy fails May 5th, you're still down to two deputies. You're going to run. You're going to open the pool. 
which is going to take, if you give them 40,000, 41,000, somewhere around 39,600 to be okay. exact. But that's money there that could have been used towards the law enforcement. you got vandalism now. If we haven't, we've been down to two deputies for, what, three months, four months? Approximately that. Mm -hmm. Okay, your vandalism is up, correct, Sarge? We, yes, uh, without looking at the actual stats, right, I would right. say. I mean, yes. just, okay. Crime is up in general. I mean, even the city's own quality hook was broken into. But this, all I'm trying to say here is money can be used senselessly towards proper use. It needs to be looked into you get our own law enforcement back. Yes, sir. I understand what you're saying. Again, we have done that in the past. Mr. Lowry just explained to you that uh, about three years ago, we looked at that again. We need to look at it again. We could do that. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Ms. Lowry, you go first. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. I Ron, I was going to mention, I know a lot of us were at that last joint government meeting or two joint governments when we go, someone had brought up the Medway, was it Medway? Or the uh, Donaldsville. Donaldsville, thank Donaldsville. you. Donaldsville yeah. Police. Doug and Frank. Doug Frank was there and he is there, I believe, full time. Yeah. And he said he gets paid less than $400 a month. So, I mean, a, a bargain's good, but when it's that cheap, I think you need to weigh out what's more important. Do you want... That, that, that man doesn't work that much anyway. Crazy. I, I don't know. I'm just going off of what he was saying, but. I mean, I can remember when his dad was a judge, constable, and fell off. Right. Right. So. You have a question? Uh, yeah. With a yes, question. Go ahead. Um, four years ago, when I, when I was running for this seat, that's one of the ideas that uh, I think was brought up is that, you know, it would be a good idea to maybe look into it to see if we could have our own police force like what we used to have and a sit down meeting with uh, Gene Kelly and so we crunched some of the numbers again with that citizens committee and we looked at it and there was things like if you're arresting a guy and he falls down and hurts his toe then we got to pick up the insurance on that we get the crime lab we get a whole bunch of other things that we would normally have to pay for but the sheriff's department now picks up um, with that we do pay for the deputies and the equipment and it's a lot of money and and going for that, um, what, what you're saying is what are we gonna, what we're going to do if the levy fails. And I think last time, or when, if the tax issue fails, last time it failed, I said we shouldn't bring this back up unless we look at serious ways to, unless we look at ways to cut the budget, because it's unfair for us to come to people and say we need to cut the budget, or we need you to, to vote for this increase without cutting it. And a big thanks goes to the mayor and the city administration, because they did sit down and, and really slash some stuff out of here. And I have five items here I can let you see. Um, five items where we did cut the budget recently um, since we've had this big budget meeting. One was uh, scheduled upgrades for city parks, $10,000. Um, rental of equipment and building land and building upgrades, that was $9,000. Uh, cutting new computer and server equipment for the city, we cut that out, that was $25,000. The elimination of all seasonal hires, that was $12,000. And our new, our incoming city manager is going to combine the city manager job with the planning director job, and that's a savings of forty thousand dollars. So the total that we were able to cut just from these five items, not even counting the rest of the stuff was cut, the total from just these five items is ninety-six thousand dollars. So we're doing everything that we can to try to get us back into a great shape. Um, looking at how much we have to spend for having a police force, in my conversations with people, plus what. Uh, my conversation with people on council and what, we went, uh, what was talked about by citizens, it didn't look like we would be getting a better deal than going with the Sheriff's Department. I agree it's something we can look into, but we're doing our best to try to cut the budget, make sure we can get on solid fiscal ground, so that way people will see that and say, hey, if we're doing our best, maybe we will think about voting for this, um, for this tax, is tax issue, the upcoming tax issue, and uh, hopefully we can move forward. And if we, we've got all the money that we need and it looks like it's a better deal to have our own police department, just like four years ago, I'm definitely in favor of doing that. So, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Have we ever considered, like, we had a committee, what, three and a half years ago? It would be a little bit for, more than that because I, would, I was on council and we never had a committee discussing police, but can we form another one to discuss that, this That's issue? something that can be done, of course. So, would that, something we can look into. Would that take a motion for us to form the committee? Uh, or? Uh, it's, let's, why don't we wait and see what happens as far as the levy? At that point, if it does not 
past, then I think that's something we should look into. Do you think it's better to be proactive than reactive? Because it I, mean, I don't think that's reactive. I think it's something that we need to look into. All right, thank you. Sure. I, I based this information on what Gene Kelly said that night at the meeting. Uh -huh. Okay. I didn't just, I don't want to say, reach up in the air and pull it out. No, I understand. I mean, what he said here that night and discussed with the council and the mayor and, and uh, people in attendance, that's what I started looking into all this stuff. Uh -huh. And that's why I came up with that. Right. My definite uh, situation would be that I would like a professional, uh, definitely a professional outfit, to get a professional outfit to protect the citizens of this community, you need people that are professionals. To be able to get young people or older people it makes it very tough. And again, we have looked into it. We've been more than willing to look into it again. Okay? That's all I ask. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Anybody else? I'd like to go up. Have anything else to say? You look familiar. Yeah. What's your name? I'm a statue. Again, everybody knows who I am. I'm William Lindsay, 314 North Henry Street. Hello, Miss Carlin. Sarge, have some questions. Sure. Uh, I understand we had a new uh, a uh, contract deputy here in New Carlisle was assaulted here in the last week or so. How bad was he hurt? And basically, why wasn't he able to call for backup? And how long would it take him for the backup to get here? Are you talking about the incident with Deputy Beller? No, I didn't know about that one. I'm talking about Deputy Stahl. Well, that was a long time ago. Okay. That's that. been, yeah, a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, we, he did go to a domestic and he was assaulted and yes we had people up here uh, but reality is it, it could take 10 minutes it could okay. take 15 minutes but a citizen did come to his aid which I correct think he, the citizen came to his to aid was, they was able to subdue the person um, and then backup got here and <laughs> dale was able to regain his composure and able to handcuff the guy All right. okay when you get 911 hang-ups what do they do do they have to Respond to all of them. We respond to every 911 hang up. Regard. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, sir. A sergeant or a road supervisor can't override that. Normally, we don't. Uh, an incident where we may consider going to a 911 phone call is maybe a, uh, a nursing home type of facility. And there's staff 24/7 there. A lot of times, those people will give us a call because. Uh, they're upset with the with the staff at the facility. Uh, sometimes, if we if we're not busy, we still check them. But if we're backed up on calls, we'll call back, ask the supervisor to go check whatever, and usually we're good with that. Ninety nine percent of the time, we answer all nine one one calls. And that's regardless we have a contract with on duty or not. Yes. Okay, that's the answer I was looking for. My next question is for uh, Mrs. Harris. Do you have any idea how much money we collect from the courts in Springfield when the deputies write citations, arrest or whatnot here in New Carlisle? Do we get anything back from the courts when they go to traffic court or whatever it is, whatever their fines are for whatever? Yeah. I know you wouldn't expect that question, was you? <laughs> we do get a report, I believe every month, um, but I don't have the numbers. Totally Can you give changed. me a ballpark within $100,000? Within a hundred thousand, yeah. I can do that. Make couple it easier. Thousand. Couple of thousand. Yeah, hundred thousand or a couple of thousand. Couple of thousand. Oh, okay. We're missing some materials. Are you saying per okay. month, Mr. Yes. Harris? Yes. Yeah. I remember figures that we had seen in the budget, and I think it was around twenty-six thousand for the year. Twenty-six, twenty-eight, if I remember correctly. Does that sound familiar? It does. It's somewhere it's, in that area. Is most of those like from tickets and things like that? That and a lot of it would be OVI things of that nature. Also. Okay. Anybody have any more questions they want to come up? Because I have another, I have to sit down and then I can come back. But if somebody else has questions, please come back. Anybody down. else <laughs> like to, anyone else like to say something this evening? I'm sitting down. I, we I got wrote, you. I broke the time on it. Mr. Lindsay, you're up again. <laughs> All right. Now I'm speaking as the chairman of the Support New Carlisle Police Levy. 
I firmly believe this needs to pass in uh, May. I also firmly believe the reason it didn't pass last November, as somebody stated in the newspaper, uh, is because they used the word streets on their campaign stuff last year. That's my personal belief, not a city's or whatever. Uh, I was probably one of those when I went to the thing and went to vote and I said streets. I thought, what the world are they doing? We just passed one in May. Now they're wanting more money. I went ahead and voted for it because it had the word police in it. I figured if they needed some money for streets, that so be it. Uh, the uh, newspaper article I read had 64% uh, of the voters overwhelmingly rejected the half a percent last year. I believe that was a quote directly from Mr. Ethan Al uh, Reynolds. Ethan Reynolds, not Allen. Sorry. Yeah, That's well, it, it, every time I th say Ethan Allen good, comes out right behind me. <laughs> uh, again, I, th I think it was because they had the word streets in it and people was thinking, you know, we just gave them money for streets. Why do they need more? And that's why it didn't pass. The uh, <clears throat> I read on uh, insinuations, I guess I can use that word, on Facebook the other night, council, one or more members stating they hope this fails. In my opinion, if a city council member is sitting up there and any of you thinks or hopes that this fails and tells people you hope it fails, meet me outside after this meeting and we'll have a conversation about it. And Serge, I request you to stay inside. <laughs> I am busting my ass, folks, I'm sorry. to get this thing passed. Excuse me, ma'am. Mr. Lindsay, I believe that threatening violence outside is I didn't threaten no violence. I said we'd have a conversation. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if, if this doesn't get passed, the city's going to be in fiscal watch. I'm not sure what all that means. Maybe you can enlighten us, Mr. Reynolds, what fiscal watch means. Going to fiscal watch is when you have no money and the state comes in and they start looking at ways to cut the budget and you have very little local control. And I know okay. that you're referring to me about me being against the levy. And I have been against it from day one. My opinion hasn't changed, no matter what you have to say or you want to meet me outside or not. I'll gladly talk with you about it, but my opinion has not changed. I've consistently I know stood you've been by very my vocal. statements, and I haven't moved a bit, despite seven, six of us going for it, one of us going against it, and the community is pretty much divided even on this issue. I have consistently maintain that I am against this levy because I feel like the citizens don't trust us and there have been other budget cuts. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, the other six will refute this and that's and I'm totally fine with that. that. That's the whole point of our republic. And I understand that you voted against it from the beginning. But when you go on Facebook and tell people you hope it passed because you're a city councilman, they take your word more than they take anybody else's on these it, comments and Facebook. Out of, out of curiosity, I didn't say I hope it fails or I hope it passes. I don't believe I said either. I said I voted against this. I didn't say I hope everyone fails. I said I voted against it. So I would really appreciate if you want to put words. I, I, will, now, I will go back and, and look at that. And you can go ahead and read All it. Right, I will go back and look at Gentlemen, let's not get argumentative. The, uh, let's just put out facts. I, I guess all I want to say from that, from this point on, is I busted my butt to get this out, to get the signs, get the literature. I'm going to have the city blanketed here at the end of this month sometime with the help of the junior ROTC the, uh, to go door to door to put literature out. Hopefully we can get this passed. The, uh, we get a lot of services from the sheriff's office that we don't and would not get if we had our own police department. I know the city had a police department at one time back in the 80s, I think. Did you have any detectives? Did you have any investigators? Yes. Who did that, Mr. Cook? There were two detectives that were appointed. Uh, 
from, I mean, was it from the county or did they work, they worked for the city? Okay. They were police officers and detectives. Pardon me? They were police officers slash detectives. Okay. That's just all I got, I guess. Mr. Lindsay, I want to thank you for all your hard work on trying to get the levy passed and everything that you've done. We do appreciate it. And hopefully that citizens will be aware that we desperately need this. Uh, it could go into a financial watch, there's no doubt about it, if we don't. Uh, protection for the city is very important. We all think that. I think all seven council members think that. Uh, we have differences of opinion up here sometimes, but I think everybody up in this table and over in that table definitely has the welfare of the city in mind big time. They want this to be a thriving community. Uh, I know business leaders up and down Main Street, we have a lot of signs out up and down Main Street. I know you've talked to quite a few of them. I've talked to quite a few of them. The signs wouldn't be on their premises if they didn't respect it and want this to pass. Exactly. So I do appreciate all your time. I think all of us do. And thank you so much for your comments tonight. I got two more comments. I want to thank uh, the mayor for helping me because without a little bit of help, I couldn't have done all that's been done. I want to thank Victoria, the secretary up here to the uh, city officers. I think everybody knows who she is. She uh, has been taking calls for me at the city, people calling wanting signs. She's been nice enough to do, take their name or their address and call me with an address and the sign shows up in their yard. So I just wanted to thank both of you publicly for your assistance. Uh, I want to also thank the people on council that did make a donation to the cause. And you guys know who you are. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. All right. Anybody else from the uh, audience like to say anything, Z, before we continue on? Anyone at all? Okay, thank you. Again, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for putting up with us. We're here. Again, we have the welfare of the city in mind, all of us. Uh, committee reports. Any tonight? Any committee reports? Okay, resolutions. You want to go ahead and read the first resolution? Resolution 15-02R, a resolution authorizing Randy Bridge, Howard Kitko, and Colleen Harris as signatories on all financial accounts of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor, move yes. to adopt resolution 15-02R. Mr. Kraybacher. If you would, would you uh, just say why we need three people and so forth? Basically, on any of New Carlisle's financial or negotiable documents, instruments, checks, we require two signatures, and that's normally the city manager and the finance director. However, we, um, at times when there's someone out, I am an alternate to sign in. However, uh, not one person can sign on both lines. So if you need two signatures, I can't sign both. Um, finance, or finance director can't, can't sign both and so forth. So it's for anything financial throughout the whole city. So it's total two signatures to make sure that we're in compliance with that, Yeah, that's correct. correct. That no one could go sneak off. Right. Thank you. Any questions? Council, any questions? Would you call for the vote, sir? Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. And Mr. Craybach. Yes. 7 0 on it, please. Yeah. I was talking something there. Thank you. I'm sorry. 7 0. Yes. Vote? Okay, thank you. You would go to the next one, please. Resolution 03R, a resolution appointing representatives to the Transportation Coordinating Committee. Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Motion to adopt resolution 15 03R. Second. Again, if you would like. Absolutely. Maybe read that if you would, so people know what it's about. The uh, city of New Carlisle currently has members that are um, 
part of the Transportation Coordinating Committee, which is basically every jurisdiction in Clark County, and they assist us with uh, getting federal funds, administering funds uh, for us, and helping us with applications or any kind of uh, engineering studies. And typically, there's one council member with an alternate council member. Um, let's see. Maybe we the first, the Mayor Lil McLaughlin is the primary, and the alternate is uh, Bill McIntyre. And then for the administration, the primary will be City Manager Randy Bridge, and then the alternate is myself, Public Service Director Howard Kitko. And we attend a, a monthly meeting one time a month. Monthly, and they do take attendance, and they would like at least one or two people to be there each time. Otherwise, we may not get the grants and so forth that we have. Correct. Right. Thank you. Any questions, Council? Yes, Mr. McIntyre. Um, I'm the I'm the alternate on this, and uh, Lowell's been able to make all the meetings, and so that's that's great. I haven't had the opportunity to go to the one, but I do get the email updates um, about what they talk about, and it's a lot of resources, a lot of information that comes out about different ways that local governments can look for funding, different avenues we can go about to find resources to do traffic studies, uh, just updated information uh, related to all things uh, transportation within within the county and it's it's a really it's a really great resource um, based on what I've been seeing in the email and, and my talks with Lowell here and so um, I really encourage people if you want to go if you like to join government meetings if you enjoy meeting a lot of uh, the representatives from the area this is another organization to check out it's it really does a lot for the for the county thank you there's about 30 or 40 members actually of that who show up for the meeting, so it's a fairly large group. A lot of discourse that goes on at it also. Any anybody else? Anything? Mr. Kickoff, you call for the vote. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. And Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you. Now we'll go into ordinances, if you would, please. Ordinance 15-13, public hearing in action tonight. It's an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for professional services for the Prentice Drive Phase Two reconstruction project. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 15-13. Second. Explanation of this ordinance is um, we current, uh, this is to go into the engineering phase and design to extend where we, after we did phase one apprentice, to continue it all the way to Kennison. And once they engineer it, we currently have um, CDBG funds of approximately 80,000 80, 80, uh, towards a project. And then we will use some matching uh, street levy funds uh, to help finish the project. Um, for this one and then this will be some the big thing is storm improvements it will take the two <laughs> dry wells that are only three foot dry wells and install the six footers <laughs> that are 12 feet deep rather than just these small ones council any questions if you call for the votes sir. mr rick lowry yes mr craybacher yes mr mike lowry yes Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you. When you're ready, if you would go into the next one, please. Ordinance 15-14, public, public hearing in action tonight. This is an ordinance amending section 1270 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding a conditional use in the central business zones. Council. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Sir. Move to adopt ordinance 15-14. Second. Um, for an explanation of this ordinance, I will pass this on to uh, Mr. Bridge, our planning director. Uh, this particular ordinance centered around the uh, use of, uh, or the definition of rumors within the central business district. Right now that's listed as a conditional use. However, when I further dug into our code and realized that groomers was already defined in kennels, we just simply wanted to replace kennels with groomers. Simple as that. 
Thank you. Any questions, Council? Yes, Mr. So nothing Lawrence. else changes other than the, the verbiage? Just the verbiage. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Could you call for the vote, please. Uh, Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Seven to zero. Thank you. And when you're ready, we have two that are introduced tonight, if you would, please. Ordinance 15-15, introduction, public hearing and action, May 4th, 2015, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new backhoe in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. Ordinance 15-16, introduction, public hearing and action, May 4th, 2015, an ordinance authorizing the vacating of a portion of an alley between West Lake Street and West Lincoln Street. Thank you, sir. All right, we're at other business now. Anyone other business? Yes, Mr. Mack. Yeah, um, I was going to talk about the, the different sort of uh, cost savings cuts we did now, but I answered it because I think it fit in with your question better. But there's something else I want to bring up too. Uh, part of working and making sure people um, are involved with the budget process, I think, is having involvement and oversight into it. Um, there's two neat things that I hope we're going to, us as accounts, are going to look at and really investigate and have come to light. One of them is having a budget committee. Um, that would just basically be a, a group of citizens and some members of council that get the budget, become literate in how to read financial documents, go through it so we know what we're looking at, how it works, how things like general funds work or earmarked uh, funds work. And that would be something that I hope we'll look into and move forward in the future so we can have that so that way people can be involved in the process, know the numbers, and go out in the community. And the second one is something that came to light recently. It's from the treasurer, the Ohio Treasurer's Office, and they have a program called OhioCheckbook.com. And what this is, um, apparently cities, municipalities, government entities can submit their budgets to it. They're uploaded onto the treasurer's website, and anyone can log on. It's, it's evidently free. You can log on, go through, and see an itemized list of how much we're spending, how we're spending it, uh, basically any sort of financial document. So if you can't make it to a council meeting, if you can't make it to the city building, you can log on to the website and uh, go ahead and look at the financial statement. And that's something I hope that we'll look into and maybe entertain uh, wanting to be part of after we investigate it and make sure that it, it fits right with us. Because I think both the Budget Committee and this uh, initiative from the Treasurer's Office could do a lot to get more people involved in the budget process, which is always a good thing. Mr. Thank Mark, you. Tyler, you're missing one Thank point. You. It is free to local governments. They will, all we do is send the data and they will put it on for free. It won't cost us a dime. Excellent. How often can we update it? How often can we? As update much it? as we want, we can do it every day. We'll nice. send it to the strategy office. They'll update it. Nice. Yes, sir. Can I? Did you need something? Else? I was just going to state that uh, myself or and then Mr. Bridge, when he takes over as city manager, and uh, Ms. Harris, we all got that letter, and we're going to make a call for him to come in and take a look at the data because they operate with CMI software, SSI software, and see what we got to do to get that data to them. And so we're not even sure how it gets. To them. Yeah, like statistics won't good. transfer unless it's the same program language. Uh, it, it, yeah, yeah. they got to come in and see what, how we need to get it to them. Yeah. Our filing system may be different than some others, so. Yeah, sure. It's not going to be on there overnight. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Mr. Cobb, you wanted to say something? Is it feasible right now to look into the purchase of tobacco? It is because one we have is actually dangerous and it breaks down all the time. Costs more than uh, it's worth, to be quite honest with you. And it was we're, we're looking at it. It was budgeted to do that this year. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good Thank question. You. Anybody else on anything there? It will help you give you a piece of court care. Yes, I'm. I got to repair the old ones that can use as a backup. Do you want me to answer that now or wait till the next? I, I think so. When it's introduced, how about if we wait for that? That'll be the next council meeting. It's already introduced. We'll be talking about it at that time. I just wanted to run over some things that uh, I'd ask our finance director to put together today. Uh, these are the cuts that we've made so far uh, to let everybody know. The general fund cuts already made reflect in the 2015 budget 
total over $315,000. General fund additional costs in the 2015 budget from 2014, unfortunately, the increase in debt payments, <coughs> wages, taxes, insurance, and the cost of operation, including workman's comp, has doubled on us for this year over last year. So that's a big factor in what's happened. <coughs> so basically, we're exactly right around 100, well, I say exactly, I shouldn't have said exactly, around $123,000 after these other additional costs that we've actually cut from this year. Uh, the other thing, the another additional cut that we've had, as you know, our planning director is now going to become our city manager. He's going to be doing two jobs at once. That's going to be savings of close to 40000 because of the other accelerated things that go into that as far as medical as well as PERS and so forth. We are going to have to hire a code enforcer to go around and look at properties and so forth because he cannot do that as well as city manager's job. I also wanted to thank Mr. Kitko very much so for stepping up. You've done a wonderful job of stepping up and taking care of it. He actually had three hats tonight and I thought he did an excellent job. I'd like to give him a hand for that. <laughs> did a great job. I, I can't wait to see how your minutes are going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, we're going to get some, I'm going to get some assistance. <laughs> okay, that'll be good. Uh, let me see what else I had here. Oh, the general fund revenue is 93% tax income is down to 93%, and our tax income continues to decline, just to let you know. Local government is down from $50,000 four years ago to 27000 in 2014. We used to get an estate tax that brought in $78,000 in 2012. We expected zero in 2015. And homestead and rollback tax is down 50% from a year ago. So taxes that we used to get, these are things that are being cut, 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 and that, that is affecting us big time. So we're trying our best to stay out of uh, the physical watch. Uh, the last that we had was like $14,000 when we actually presented the budget to the county, I believe, is that correct? A little over $14,000. So we're a little bit better than that now. We're still trying to cut other things. So if you'll bear with us, we are trying our best. Again, I'll state again, all council members up here, that whole staff, we have the welfare of the city. We're trying our best to do what we can do with, with less money. And that's exactly what's happening. It's less money, less money. That's why this half percent income tax, if you read the papers, listen to the news, all other entities in this greater Miami Valley are asking for more taxes. They're asking Springfield was in the paper last week, half percent. They're thinking of either a quarter or a half percent because they need it. They figure they're going to be two million dollars in the red 2016. And if we don't get more money, we're going to be in the red 2016 also. So I wanted to leave that with everyone. John, go ahead. Okay. Just two things. Randy, um, sidewalk. When's that going to start up again? Uh, we will start it back up. Timing, we're not, I'm not too sure. I think it's probably kind of putting pause until we get our new our code enforcement officer, which, by the way, uh, application deadline is this Wednesday for that. If you want some more information, just stop in and see us at the city building. Um, so uh, it will be done this year. It's just a matter of of wind. I've, I've, I've seen concrete trucks out already, so, you know, and that's what it kind of brought up to. Yeah. People are doing it voluntarily, and that's great too, you know, so. Sure. I've Absolutely. seen a lot of improvement. The number two thing is, uh, you're right, you know, you know, Oakwood's having trouble. You know, they're uh, you know, supposed to be the cream of the crop, used to be the cream of the crop, you know, now it's Springboro, but, you know, Oakwood, and they're saying because people are moving out. You know, and people are heading toward Springboro. You know, they are having a real tough time also. You know, um, they had a tough time last year balancing their budget. You know, they, they were starting to get into a shortfall and they had to cut back things. We are not <coughs> immune to that. Um, I'm looking around, you know, here just in the audience. And again, 
is earned income. How many retirees are we starting to get you know, into this town? I'm one of them. You know, uh, my wife just retired. You know, so are we going? Are we going to still pay income tax? Yes, because we can. We can. And uh, I'm not saying you know that's good, bad, or indifferent. The whole thing is it's on earned income. You know, and I think you know. Uh, I asked Colleen to check into that, and she sent a nice little note, you know, back, you know, from uh, the tax director. But we do need the police. It doesn't make any difference really you know, if you have four people, four policemen, six policemen, all sitting outside your house. <coughs> what makes a difference in the community is your neighbors. You know, the people that look after you the most be the person across the street, next door, you know, go get to know them. I have a neighbor across the street. He was out the other day with, you know, edging everybody else's yard. Now come on. Does anybody else have that? I had a neighbor, you know, to do that. He was going down. Do you need your yard? He was doing it with the edger. He, you know, we have people, you know, that come along. You know, believe it or not, Bill Lindsay is one of them. You know, he comes along, you know, and he shovels off snow off the sidewalk. We watch after each other. We have more communities of people looking outside their door before they go to bed and looking across the across the way and say, hey, you know, it's okay. Or seeing a car going down the street real slow, that's when you call the sheriff. You know, because by the time they get down, you know, up around the block and maybe park and into somebody else's <coughs> house, the deputy will be behind them. You know, that's what we need in the community. That's what we need. You know, we also need the police. You know, four deputies. I remember there were six deputies in town and my car was still getting broken into. Did it make any difference? No. It didn't make any difference to a six deputy. Because when somebody steals something, they just, they just don't see anything. But we do need the police department as a deterrent to the crime. You know, as a deterrent. Ron Fader and I, we, you know, we talked the other, the other night. You know, he said he kind of disagreed with me. You know, you know, he disagreed with me. He said, you know, more deputies, less crime. I don't see that. Otherwise, New York City would be the safest place in the world. I'm just saying, I'm saying two things. We need the police department. We need that levy passed. And we need good neighbors. <clears throat> that's why I moved here to Carlisle. And that's why I'm on city council, to have good neighbors. You know, Dewey, you got a good neighbor across the street. She looks at your, she looks at your you know, lights, you know, she knows you're home and you're not. So, no, I'm just I'm saying, we need good neighbors, people looking after each other. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Zamba. One last plug for the levy. We do need the levy for our police department, be it just to restore deputies, or if we go down a different path, that takes money too. I mean, it, you know, it, whichever's best, Wherever we get the best bang for, for our buck, absolutely we're in favor of it, and we will pursue your idea. But in addition to that, you mentioned, can we afford to buy a backhoe this year? Well, we really can't afford to, but we absolutely must. I mean, it, it's not an option. But we also are going to have to buy some police cars and various equipment. We don't have the money for it. Even with two police cars on the road, we can't fix them. So we're going to have ongoing expenses, some of a significant nature. We need additional monies to just function properly as a city. Please vote yes. I hate to pay a couple bucks extra, but the alternative is horrible. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Anybody else? Yes, Mike. Uh, I'm going to switch gears here. I think you guys have all covered the levy pretty well. I just want to get back to the pool. Uh, I know that's a sore subject in town. Uh, I voted for the pool. I know some of you have heard this before, but I want to get back to it, Ron. I know you're, I know that's your favorite subject, but, uh, you know, the, the pool is going to be open for, for this 2015 season, and the people that did vote for it said if it doesn't break even or, you know, lose just a little bit of money, ten, five thousand dollars $5,000, it probably won't open next year or ever again. 
but you know, with that responsibility of voting to keep that, that pool open, you know, me and I, I, Bill has been helping me a little bit. We're going to do everything we can to cut the, the cost of the pool back. You know, I had a meeting with um, Howie, Valerie, who's the manager of the pool, and two private citizens because what's, you know, the best way, just like having you guys here getting information, was to get some information from people who use that pool every day. And I know that we've talked about some of these ideas to cut the cost back, which was dropping the temperature just a few degrees, closing it if the outside air temperature maybe hits 70, you know, close the pool. We talked about, I think, cross-training employees like lifeguards, uh, pushing sales, you know, when you go to a parts store or, you know, to McDonald's, they ask you, do you want two apple pies for a buck? You know, we want to start asking people when they come up to order food, you know, hey, do you want an extra candy bar for a dollar? You know, these little things I think can help. And then, you know, when, no one is in line we need to get people to go out and ask the moms that are sitting there in their lawn chairs relaxing can i run and get you something for uh from the from the concession you know can i get you a pop so push and add on sales i think is a big plus and then again i've you know i've worked up a couple letters and, and we're getting them out to some businesses that have have gotten with me that do want to help and make some donations as far as cash and a couple of businesses that want to donate some things like paint and, and some uh, wood to get the, the back shelter area uh, spruced up a little bit. But, you know, Ron, I know you're, like I said, I know that that's one of your biggest concern. And my goal is to come back hopefully at the end of the pool season and tell you that it either broke even or we only lost a couple thousand dollars. I mean, with, with my vote, that's what I'm promising you to, to do my best to get it as low as a cost to run as possible and then next year if it if it if it didn't perform the way we want then i'll i'll vote to, to close it well and, and i'll vote to close it next summer just like i promised but i just i'm letting everyone know that i'm going to work personally to you know to get it to save money as much as possible that's good uh yes sir mr lowry please thank you sir um Mr. Zambach touched on something. I might take it just a little bit farther. And that was whether we have the deputies or we have our own police department, whether the levy fails or passes, okay? We can talk about the deputies and the police. The United States of America, in my opinion, has the greatest military force in the entire world, bar none. We give them everything they need to go fight battle and oppose the enemy. Okay? Our police force, we can't afford to buy them a car. We can't afford to buy them a camera, which protects them and protects the citizens. We cannot afford to buy them vests. We, being the city, I'm sorry, cannot afford to buy them rifles. Rather, once again, the levy passes or not, whether you're for or against it, and even if you're against it, you can't prove the figures, you know. We need to pass it so we can protect these people that protect us. Okay, we have to give them the proper equipment. I don't feel good going to bed at night knowing that I send a police officer out on the street that doesn't have the proper weapons, doesn't have the cameras, doesn't have the vest, doesn't have the proper car. He could get broke down alongside the road, no matter, no telling what could happen to him. I heard we will talk, I want to talk a little bit, I know Bill, you spoke about the police force, sounded like you was for it, I know you are. I was highly involved with the last, not the last, the next to the last police force we had in New Carlisle. Then one of the deputy, or one of the um, um, inspectors that you spoke about, detectives, was reprimanded because he got bored and was on Mill Street shooting out street lights. Okay? I have never heard that coming from a sheriff's deputy. Never, okay? Um, we've got to protect these people, and we do need the levy passed. Whether you want the private police force, city police force, or the deputies, I'm asking everybody here to please vote for the levy. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Any other comments? Council? Citizens, anybody comment on anything? I'm sorry. <laughs> I got neighbors. <laughs> While you're all talking, I went over your list of chats and I'm Kathy Waco from the e and e, from the New Carlisle News and the e and e. uh -huh. Why are you paying 
$25 for a pay phone at the skate park when everybody has a cell phone these days? I don't know the answer to that. I Do we know one. the answer to that? I can give one. Everybody does not have a cell phone, okay? I, for, I for a fact, have a grandson who skates there that does not have a pay phone. And if he were to get a hurt, I would surely want someone to be able to dial 911. But a city that is in financial crisis, ready to move into um, state oversight to spend that, and then also spend ten thousand four hundred fifty-eight dollars and eighty-five cents for their February legal services. I have never been to. I personally cover many government meetings mm -hmm. and have never seen a legal advisor sit at every city meeting. I've been to county meetings. I've been to city meetings. I've been to township meetings. That's a lot of money. Kathy, to be quite honest with you, we're trying to catch up on a lot of legal issues that have been let go, that have not been addressed in the last year or two. And that's the problem that we are facing at this point. There's been quite a few. Twin Creeks is one of the biggest ones. It's taking a lot of time. There are other issues. That's why we have changed law directors and in my estimation, that's the reason that the cost is higher than it has been in the past, because the work wasn't being done. And we've suffered because of it. It's actually cost us money, because things were not accomplished as they should have been. So that's been an ongoing problem with us. So it's a catch up, and that's what's happening. Anyone else, anything? And as far as the... Uh, the phone, I had no, I was not aware of that. Is that in the budget? I didn't even see that. It's, part, it's one of your checks, 70145, actually the last check. Okay. And, and I have a little Mrs. answer Harris, on that. Yes, please. At the beginning of the year when we were working on the budget, um, that was one of the items that the former city manager and I had worked on. We had requested a three-year history on the phone, and we got the information of how often it was used and we were just bringing it to um, attention when um, we ran out of time with her. So we are looking into it, so now it's, um, basically there are months that it does not get used at all, of course, um, winter months and it, a little bit in the summer, and we were looking to see if there was another cell phone or another phone available in the, in the same vicinity that we might be able to get out of that. We are in a month-to-month -month all-night contract, so um, as soon as we finish up the um, recommendation with the next manager, um, we were going to bring that to council. But that was one we were looking at. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I was not aware of that, to be quite honest with you. And I don't know if the rest of council was. Anybody on council aware of that? No. <clears throat> I was not either. So that's something you brought to our attention. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to welcome our new city manager that will be official this Wednesday. Mr. Bridge, and we are counting on you to help us out big time, and we think you can do the job. We really appreciate you stepping forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So if no one else has anything else, we'll go ahead. Uh, would you like to read the other, I'm sorry, the joint meeting and so forth, if you would, Mr. Pickle? Uh Joint government meeting, Monday, June 29th, 2015. Okay. At 6.30 p.m., hosted by New Carlisle City Council at the Smith Park Shelter House. That is open to the public. Uh, Crime Watch will be Wednesday, May 13, 2015, 6.30 p.m., here at the Smith Park Shelter House. Thank you, sir. Executive session, there's none tonight. And I would anticipate Mr. Zambach saying something now. How about I move we adjourn? I think that's a great idea. Yeah.